Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the out of some old DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits, and even GD match results. Yes, I'm going to show you GD match results as well of a Yellow River Neolithic farmer. Uh, let's start with the sample, what the sample is. It's a female, it's a girl. Uh, she lived, let's find out the time. She lived, it seems like, in the Neolithic, in the Middle Neolithic period in China. Uh, and let's find out where she lived. This is where she lived. This is the province of China she's from. Now let's go ahead and explore what this Neolithic uh, farmer woman from China, uh, what kind of traits she had and what kind of ethnicities she resembled. We're going to start with ethnicities. So actually, we're going to start with, with this because I want to show you what I did here. Uh, it's a little gender and Y chromosome thing. So as you can see, she doesn't have, she doesn't have any uh, variance on the Y chromosome, which means in this case, it's either a damaged or corrupted file or it's a female who doesn't have any Y chromosome calls. Uh, in this case, we know it's a female. It's not a corrupted corrupted file. So as you can see, it's out of zero total for every um, haplogroup that it looks for. So she doesn't really have any of the male Y-DNA reads, any Y-DNA calls, which in this case is because it's a female. Uh, for the ethnic calculator, we're going to start with that. So it looks like for the ethnic calculator results, she's resembling Korean's closest. Korean 2 is actually pretty different from Korean 1. I don't remember which one is shifted towards what. Uh, but Koreans and Chinese come closest to her, followed by that are Mongols, followed by that is Tibetan. Uh, actually, Tibetan comes pretty close. Iron Age Tibetan comes pretty close. Uh, further, it's Filipino, Jamon, uh, Yakutia Neolithic um, individual from Yakutia, and this Mongol individual. So it looks like she's getting modeled as a mixture of Korean 2 plus Korean 1, so basically a mixture of Korean plus Korean, or Chinese plus Korean 1, or Chinese plus Korean 2. So it's like a mixture of Chinese, Korean, and, and something else. Uh, just basically a very basic uh, Northeast Asian result. We're going to compare that with GED match actually right now. So with GED match, and by the way, my um, ethnic calculator, it's it's um, it doesn't compare with GED match. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying it's it's definitely not because um, this ethnic calculator is not good at all. Uh, the main reason you should purchase my trait predictor is for the Nashakot and for the uh, risk scores and for the um, trade right that's that's the main reason you should purchase it's not for the trade for the ethnicity calculator this is not really good but we're going to compare that with uh gd match as you can see this is what she scores with ancient eurasia k6 and we can we can click on the oracle and see uh what she's getting modeled as it's surprising that she's scoring it looks like one and a half percent natufian and two percent west european hunter gatherer and two percent sub-saharan african that is that is surprising that's something i wasn't expecting to see here uh, but then again, this was done with 14k SNPs. 14k SNPs is it seems a lot compared to my ethnic calculator because you can compare the numbers right here. My ethnic calculator is only looking at 387 SNPs in this case, but it's actually not all that much. It's re it's really not all that much. So let's go ahead and click on the Oracle, and with the Oracle, she's closest to Tibetans, Mongols, Nganasan, and followed by that are Han and Ami and basically various. Um, Northeast Asian. So she's getting modeled actually as a mixture of Ami plus Moroccan or Ami plus Algerian. I think Ami is a group of people in Mongolia. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Ami plus Saharawi, so basically a mixture of Ami plus some kind of North African. There's also Goyet here, which is just really deranged. Goyet is um, like Upper Paleolithic individual, Upper Paleolithic type of person that's ancestral to Western hunter gatherers, basically. And for GD matches Harappa World Calculator, this is going to be a little bit better because Harappa World is a pretty good calculator. It's it's really tailored towards like non-European and East Asian and Asiatic people in general um, have more precise results with Harappa World. So it looks like mostly she's scoring Northeast Asian, but there is also some Siberian here. Um, yeah, it's pretty much a very East Asian result. And let's click the Oracle. Let's see what she's closest to, what populations show up here. So with the populations, the closest is Naga. I don't know what that is. Uh, Awonga. Okay, Tibet. I know Tibet. I can recognize Tibet. And Han from China, I can recognize that too. So it looks like she's closest to various Chinese people. Uh, whatever is Naga, let's let's actually look up. Actually, Naga might um, show up something really non-specific. Let's look up Awonaga because this is a little bit more specific. What's Awonaga? I'm going to educate myself right now. Um, what what is this? 
Okay, Mokok. That doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> that doesn't tell me anything. I think it's Southeast Asia. I think it's Southeast. What's Nagaland? Okay, Nagaland. Let's do it. Uh, state in Northeast India. Okay, so it's it's Northeast India. All right. So it looks like she's closest to various Northeast Indians, Tibetans, which I guess makes sense. Tibet is right there. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of two plus Japanese or Japanese plus Mongolian or Japanese plus... It's it's really a testament, actually, when you look at these results. She's closest to Tibetans and people in Northeast India, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of two plus Japanese. So it really shows you how similar all, all these people are from Japan to Tibet. There isn't that much... Um, there isn't that much difference between these people. Of course, yeah, um, if you if you take a really detailed test that goes into like um, hundreds of thousands of S&Ps, you can tell the difference. But when you look at GED matches Harappa world, it can't really tell the difference with their 119 S&Ps, 119,000 S&Ps, excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and explore what she looks like. We're going to start with Nashakor. I'm not going to show you the Oka 2 and Herc 2 eye color calculator. It's not really... You know, it's not something I want to waste time on. So with Nashakot, she's scoring darkest brown eyes. So she's probably got darkest color of brown eyes that you can have. Um, brown eyes, the likelihood of that is pretty low for her. It's only 8%. For hair color, she's scoring black hair. So it looks like she's got black hair color, not dark brown, not any other kind of hair color, but black instead. And for skin color, it looks like she's scoring light brown skin. Pretty, pretty spot on. That's kind of what these people generally look like. For hair texture, she's scoring straight hair, although wavy hair is actually also possible. And that's a little bit surprising because uh, I'm not used to seeing East Asians scoring any kind of likelihood for wavy hair with my tool. So uh, it's surprising that she's actually scoring 35.9% likelihood of wavy hair. Uh, when it comes to coloring related variants, it looks like she does not have BH3, no BH2. Uh, she's heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1, which is nothing surprising. Um, it, it's it is found in East Asians. It is found in every non-African group. Now in every non-Sub-Saharan African, excuse me, group. Um, okay, and let's go ahead and see what about what about MC1R? No variants in MC1R. No derived variants in MC1R. So it looks like she does not have derived variants in MC1R. No likelihood of being ginger. Um, all right. So for mental health, it looks like she's not genotyped for a lot of this stuff. A lot of the important stuff. Uh, she's got this genotype in COMT, which leads to decreased risk of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Um, she's got this genotype in ZRD1, which is typical for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. Really good to see. Uh, she's got this genotype in ZRD1, which leads to higher likelihood of autism. Um, okay, interesting. And it's it's this genotype is interesting, which is increased uh, associated with an increased likelihood of multiple mental health conditions including novelty-seeking addiction and intellectual disability. Those are not really that important, all of these variations. Uh, this file actually isn't very high quality. As you can see, a lot of these categories don't have any any results at all. For DDC gene panel, it looks like she's got this genotype, which means she's more likely to smoke heavily if, a, if she's a smoker. For lactose persistence, it looks like she does not have any derived variants for European lactose persistence. She, If she took an ancestry DNA test, they would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. Uh, for OXTR and the empathy gene, it looks like she's got one sociopath variant and one empath variant, and the main variation of OXTR has to do with empathy. Uh, for diabetes, it looks like she does not have type one diabetes, and we can't really tell. We can't really tell about type two diabetes because it's so polygenic. We're going to find out when we look at the polygenic risk scores, uh, which is scores for that. It looks like she does not have any risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE, which is really good to see. Uh, once again, the polygenic risk, we're going to find out when we look at the polygenic risk scores page. We don't really, we can't really calculate that here by looking at these results. For multiple sclerosis, it looks like she does not have any risk variance, any important risk variance for MS, which is really good to see. But then again, it's not a very high quality file. Not a lot of stuff was found here. For cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like she's got uh, lower odds of brain aneurysm and heart attack in this variation. Uh, decreased risk of coronary artery disease. Okay. Uh, normal or lower risk of coronary artery disease, lower risk of aneurysm, uh, lower risk of heart disease. So it looks like pretty good, actually. Uh, I don't see any. I don't see any genotypes that would infer a higher risk of heart disease or some kind of aneurysm or some kind of 
cardio cardiovascular problems. So that's pretty good to see. For myopia, we're going to skip that actually. For miscellaneous section, no micro P, no micro P, really good to see. Um, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. No fat gene variants in FTOs, RS 99, 39, 609. So it looks like she's not predisposed to obesity. Uh, we're going to skip drug response. For albinism, is there any al albino variations here? Nope, she does not carry any variation uh, variants for albinism. That's really good to see. For familiar Mediterranean fever, she actually has one risk variant here, which is kind of crazy. Um, okay, I noticed that familiar Mediterranean fever, uh, it 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 is um, stereotyped as being, and it's 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 in the name, right? It's stereotyped as being a very Mediterranean disease. Like the risk variants here are most common in Mediterranean people, such as like Turkish people, Jews. Uh, Greeks, people like that, Armenians. But I actually see a lot of, oh, there's two risk variants here as well. I actually see a lot of risk variants among East Asians as well. I'm not sure why that is. So she's got three risk variants for familiar Mediterranean fever. Very interesting. For MTHFR panel, it looks like she has a healthy genotype, lower odds of uh, for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. Very healthy genotype to have. For cancer panel, it looks like she doesn't really have any risk variants for breast cancer and any of the important variations except for this one. By the way, in case you don't know, BRCA1 and BRCA2, uh, these are genes that have to do with breast cancer mostly. Like, that's what it is. That's what it's about. So when you see me saying she doesn't have any risk variants for breast cancer, I'm talking about these BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Um, okay, it looks like for leukemia, she's got somewhat increased risk for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, but she's got these genotypes which sort of lower the risk, uh, the risk of leukemia. For rare diseases panel, it looks like she um, does not have, does not really. Okay, wait a second. No, she's got AT here, which leads to slightly increased risk for several autoimmune diseases, including Addison's disease. I think this is pretty rare. Uh, I don't remember exactly because it's been a long time since I added this here, but I think it's pretty rare to score this kind of a genotype to have this kind of genotype here. And she's got this variation, which this, this um, these two variants. <clears throat> which lead to higher risk for certain autoimmune diseases. So once again, it's autoimmune diseases, same thing as like Addison's and stuff like that, like diabetes, Addison's, uh, those types of issues. All right, for celiac disease, it looks like she doesn't have HLA. She doesn't have any risk of evidence in LHA, HLA, which is by far the most important gene for uh, for celiac disease, but she does have some risk of evidence, like for example here. We're going to find out when we look at the polygenic risk scores page because it's on there. Um, we're going to skip allergies panel, androgen receptor, nothing was found in the file, unfortunately. And there's, it's just, it's um, frustrating when I made all this, all this stuff and I added all this stuff here, but these files are simply kind of low quality and uh, this stuff is not found in the file. If you took a MyHeritage or Ancestry 23 and me, all that stuff would be in your file. Just want to remind you that. So what I'm showing you here is not what you would see if you took this, uh, if, if you purchased this from me. And run your file through it. Okay, so for Crohn's disease, it looks like she's got typical over risk of Crohn's disease. Very good. Uh, for Canavan syndrome, zero risk variance for Canavan syndrome. Uh, for HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like she does not have any risk, any variants that protect from HIV because there are actually some variants that protect from HIV that allow you to um, that sort of protect from HIV transitioning into AIDS. You know, because HIV is simply a virus that's sitting in your uh, sitting in your in your body and doing something and once it's done doing what it's doing once it's done compromising your immune system it turns into aids for some people this process can take like 20 years for some people this process can take like three months so those people who take for for who it takes 20 years this would be the people who have you know some genetic protection against it in her case she does not have this genetic protection uh for muscular dystrophy it looks like she's got two risk variants here which is kind of surprising uh Okay, I don't remember what exactly, uh, what exactly kind of muscular dystrophy myopathy it is. It's not ADL. It's not adrenal leukodystrophy because here she's scoring zero out of two. Uh, it's something else. It's some other kind of muscular dystrophy, which is kind of, um, I guess, alarming. Let's go ahead and check her polygenic risk scores right now, and we're gonna see what she scores for all the stuff that I was promising to show you earlier. Uh, so it looks like she's got a below average score for schizophrenia. It looks like she's got pretty much a spot on average score of, for type 2 diabetes. It looks like she's got a below average score for Alzheimer's. She's got an average score for multiple sclerosis. Very interesting to see. Um, for cancer section, one risk variant for breast cancer out of 14. So yeah, I was telling you, she doesn't really have any risk variants for that. 
really good to see that she doesn't have that many risk variants for breast cancer. Um, for testicular cancer, 5 out of 14, once again, pretty typical result. For celiac disease, 2 out of 12, pretty typical result. For GSS, really good to see 0 out of 18 um, risk variants, so 0 risk variants out of 18 in total, really good to see. For Crohn's disease, it looks like 2 out of 16, uh, looks pretty good to see as well. Um, for Reifenstein's, it looks like 0 out of 0, so okay, nothing here was found. Yeah, that's because, I think I know why, that's because this sample doesn't have that much data on um, on the X chromosome, that's probably why. And for Parkinson's, five out of out of forty-two. That's really crazy. Okay, five out of forty-two for Parkinson's is actually kind of crazy. It's um it's a pretty high score, and all of these variants are uncommon. So maybe the one thing that this individual might have suffered from uh, in her lifetime was Parkinson's. That's that might be one of the things uh, she had to endure. Uh, but aside from that, I don't really see anything alarming here in this result. Well, thanks for watching me until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Um, please, um, yeah, leave a like and subscribe. That's it. Goodbye. And you can download the file in 23 new format from the link, which is in the description of the video.